Some jokes only get better and better as the runtime goes on. Down, get a hold of yourself! Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 hilarious running gags in movies. Hoffman! Yeah? Call the patent office, copyright the name Green Goblin, I want a corner every time somebody says it. For this list, we are considering running gags and jokes in movies as those that are referenced or used three or more times, either in an individual movie or across a film series. We arrived in four vehicles. I, I think we should split it up in four quarters. Anything less is only a callback. And, as always, the funnier, the better. Were you held back or something? Or... No. You look super young. Were you held forward? Number 10, the ice fishing story, American Hustle. We used to go ice fishing every November. Louis C.K. is probably best recognized for his storied stand-ups, but this is one little story that is completely blown out of the water by Bradley Cooper's character in this crime comedy drama. Ice fishing, that's all anybody, that's oh, what we live shit. for. Beginning as a simple pep talk, Cooper takes the reins more than once to try to guess the obvious ending. But the twist is he will never find out. One year my, my brother says, Let's go in October. He wants to go ice fishing in October. My dad says, no, the ice is too thin. Throughout the film, his boredom about the story turns into mild interest that ultimately leads to raging obsession. But what is by far the cherry on the top of this hilarious gag is the subtle annoyed look that Louis C.K. gets whenever he's interrupted. My brother says, I love my brother. He says, I understand what's happening. You say, your brother went out on the ice. The ice was too thin. He fell through the ice. He went in the water because he was too eager. And you're saying, I'm too eager. That's what you're saying? No, that's not what I'm saying. Poor guy. He usually deals with hecklers better than this. Wait, so tell me the rest of the ice fishing story. Where was I? Your father woke you up. It was a blizzard. It was Lake Canoga. Come on, come on. Number nine, splitting the money. It's a mad, 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 mad world. We arrived in four vehicles. I, I think we should split it up in four quarters. Greed is a powerful tool in the comedy genre, especially when it's paired with miscommunication. Now, we give shares to everybody and for everything. Now, there were eight, there were eight of us. Now, that's eight shares for that. Then there were four vehicles. After discovering $350,000 is up for grabs in the Santa Rosita State Park, a group of people makes a pact to hunt down the prize. I got one share for being one person, one share for going down the hill, one share for the truck, and one share for being a person in the truck. If only they could just come to an agreement on which way they're splitting the goods. I wanted to be a reasonable guy, you know, give reasonable shares. Now, they wanted every man for himself. Well, now I'm gonna show what kind of a man they're dealing with. The bickering and blindsiding are felt across all cuts of the film, including the 210 minute original cut. We all know that we're all here, and we all know that even if somebody finds the money, nobody's gonna get away with it unless everybody gets a share. So why don't we all get sensible and get this thing organized? And while the epic comedy is filled with many gags, this one about splitting the money is the longest running across the film. Everybody's gonna get something, so no arguments, cause we all get an equal share! Yeah, he's right. That's the only way to do it. Shares for everybody. Number eight, they look too old, the Jump Street franchise. You are here simply because you look young. In a movie about police detectives going undercover as younger students, this is the joke that has the most ground to stand on. Today's quiz is on Bob. You look really old. Across both 21 and 22 Jump Street, Jonah Hill and Channing Tatum are constantly at the mercy of their age, looking just a little bit older than they should for their assignments. Were you held back or something? Or? No. You look super young. Were you held forward? Their actions are so ridiculous that they can't be anything but immature and yet nobody can get past the slight wrinkles on their faces or their amazingly outdated references. Look at him, he's nice. He looks like a 30-year-old 8th grader. He's, he's gonna be fine. Needless to say, pointing out their aging failures never gets old. I'm just saying it's like all fun and games and then you wake up in bed next to a 40-year-old freshman. I'm 19, so... Number 7. You'll shoot your eye out. A Christmas Story. I want an official Red Rider Cup in action to and Joe Wayne's Ball Air Rifle. Ooh. No. Shoot your eye out. We've all been denied a toy at some point in our lives, but you wouldn't expect everyone you meet to have the exact same reason why you shouldn't have it. There could be no other explanation. You'll shoot your eye out. You'll shoot your eye out. After locking eyes with the perfect Christmas gift, Ralphie makes it his holiday mission to find any way of making his wish come true. Oh no. You'll shoot your eye out? 
yet his parents, his teacher, and even Santa Claus refuse him the air rifle for the same reason. No, no, I want an official red under carbon. I should do it if you my lay rifle. You'll shoot your eye out, kid. The hilarity of this running gag comes from the impossibility of so many people having the exact same worded opinion. And we can't help but love it, too. Oh my god, I shot my eye out! You'll shoot your eye out, kid. You'll shoot your eye out! You'll shoot your eye out! Number 6. TLC References, The Other Guys you said Second chasing time. waterfalls, now you're saying you don't want no scrubs. I don't understand the reference. It's like a tick. Who remembers this 90s girl group? Well, Michael Keaton certainly does, even if he doesn't know it. All right. Then you do us proud. Because I don't want no scrubs. Really? No. You're not aware that's a TLC song. I have no idea what you're talking about. In this action comedy, the police captain, who ain't too proud to beg, is completely oblivious to the songs he's referencing. Much to the delight of Will Ferrell and Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, why? Why? Ain't too proud to beg. Come on! What? It's not funny anymore. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not trying to see references. No matter how many times it's pointed out to Keaton, the truth of his fumbling never seems to creep up on him. Doesn't even matter. Each time, we find ourselves laughing out a waterfall's worth of tears watching it all unfold. Trust us. Real quiet. You gotta creep. Creep. Come on. You don't say creep, creep unless you're quoting TLC. Number five. Vietnam, The Big Lebowski. I did not watch my buddies die face down in the muck so that this fucking strumpet, this well, fucking whore, could waltz around Vietnam, down. see any Vietnam, man. The backstory of Walter Sobchak is varied and often spoken about by the man himself, but it's his ventures in Vietnam that are the most referenced in this crime comedy. Look, Larry, have you ever heard of Vietnam? Oh, for You're entering a world Walter. of pain, son. We know that this is your homework. From interrogations to bowling, he manages to compare almost every event to his days in Nam, no matter how ridiculous it sounds. Smokey, this is not Nam. This is bowling. There are rules. Hey. Even going so far as to completely go off track in his eulogy for one of his teammates. At Kaysan, at Londoc, at Hill 364, these young men gave their lives. Despite his talk of the vicious war, Walter also says that he once dabbled in pacifism, but just not in Vietnam. You know, dude, I myself dabbled in pacifism at one point. Not in Nam, of course. And you know, he's got emotional problems, man. Number four, Cookie's Conquests, Best in Show. That is correct, sir. It's usually an unwritten rule in relationships to never mention how many partners have come before. She was very popular back then. She had dozens of boyfriends. Hundreds. Hundreds. Sadly for Jerry Fleck, his wife's previous lovers all make themselves known. You know, I've banged a lot of waitresses in my day. You, you, you were the best. You don't forget the best. No. <laughs> in this improvisational comedy, we follow a mismatched middle-class couple on the move from Florida. And on their journey, the stunningly attractive Cookie Fleck ends up reuniting with many, many, many former conquests from her youth. Cookie Googleman? Yeah? Does this ring a bell? I'm not wearing underwear. Jerry's dismay and polite rage are just as funny to watch as they are sorrowful, but at least he takes it all fairly well. That is the one and only time I've ever done it on a roller coaster. Number three, inconceivable. The Princess Bride. As I told you, it would be absolutely, totally, and in all other ways, inconceivable. According to Dictionary.com, the definition of inconceivable is something unimaginable or unthinkable. But if you ignore that, then the word can make for one heck of a running gag. And he's gaining on us. Inconceivable. That's exactly what happens in this romantic comedy fantasy. Despite having no frame of reference for what the word means, Vizzini has an insatiable habit for describing every situation as inconceivable. He didn't fall? Inconceivable. You keep using the word. Confusing its definition with impossible, it doesn't matter what terrible endeavor our heroes are in, because, well, everything is inconceivable. Inconceivable! Number two, it was all a dream, the Back to the Future franchise. Get a grip on yourself. It's all a dream. It's just a very intense dream. The teenage time traveler of this comedic sci-fi series never had the best time with fourth dimensional thinking. 
or even distinguishing between dreams and reality. This has gotta be a dream. Every time Marty McFly is knocked out, he awakens in a bed, convinced the events leading up to this were nothing but his imagination running wild. Had a horrible nightmare. Dreamed that I went back in time. It was terrible. Waking up next to your great-great-grandmother isn't as crazy as it sounds, especially considering that you've already changed history multiple times. I had this horrible nightmare. I dreamed I was... I dreamed I was in a western. Dreaming about getting stuck in 1955 is certainly better than constantly having manure poured onto you, right Biff? I hate manure. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Um, I don't know. I have a bad feeling about this. Yeah. I, am, I, I, don't, I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm Let me see that hand. No. Yeah. I thought I recognized that name. Yeah, yeah, the way we see it, it's all for the greater good. The greater good? Well, that's as may be, but the law's the law, and they'll have to go. Number one, Stan Lee cameos, various. Son. Dad. Cameos are nothing new to the world of filmmaking, but the creator of many beloved Marvel characters never fails to make an impression in every single film adaptation he's appeared in. Uh, invitation, sir. Um, I should be on that list. Name? Stan Lee. Yeah, uh, nice try, buddy. No, nice no, try. really, nice I'm try. Stan Lee. Yeah. From the trial of the Incredible Hulk TV movie in 1989 to Big Hero 6 in 2014 and beyond, Stan Lee has made so many cameo appearances that Watch Mojo's even got a top 10 list of them. I wear them front. I wear them back. I, I go, go inside, inside out. out. Then, then I go, I go front, front and, and back. back. And it's a testament to the over 90-year-old creator of Marvel Comics that watching out for him has grown from being a sweet tribute to something that's anticipated worldwide, at least by comic book fans. And we reckon it's all rightly deserved. Look great, Hef. Do you agree with our list? This has got to be a dream. Which funny movie running gags are your favorite? Inconceivable! For more hilarious top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Come on! What? It's not funny anymore.